All right, so we got this Wander Lodge in that we're gonna tear into and see what's going on. It's a new purchase for the owners. The interior Wander Lodges are very, very nice. They always made very top of the line products, that's for sure. So this has a automatic grease system on it where there's this container that you pump grease into and it has all these other little fittings that go around it and you pump grease everywhere on the bus. So this was actually installed by Wander Lodge as a factory option. So several of their buses have it. Uh, I believe this one has 24 different grease fittings, if I remember right. Um, something like that. And it's a uh, 5 30 seconds nylon tubing that runs to all the fittings. Um, there's a diagram here that shows you where it goes, the controller boxes, all that kind of stuff. This system has obviously failed, or for some reason it's not working. Um, maybe it was out of grease, I'm not really sure. We're gonna go through and figure it out here. Uh, that tells us how to te manually test it here and everything. This is instructions from Wonder Lodge specifically here that tells you what to do. But, uh, if we get into it here, this system obviously, something's not right. And I think if you put blind faith in something like this, I'm not a big believer in this automation like this. Uh, there's something to be said for getting under there and get your eyes and your hands on something as you're lubing it at a regular basis. Um, just putting blind faith and trust in something like this is, is very, um, I, don't, I don't care for that. I'd, I'd rather have somebody get their eyes and hands on something and look for potential problems before they happen. I mean, if one of these little lines break, then that part isn't getting greased and you have no idea. You're just putting blind faith and trust that this is going to happen and, and it's, I don't agree with that. All right, do me the kingpin again. That was a lot of movement. Okay. I'd hate to see that roll out of the bus. I have a whole bag of what we call <laughs> bus clothes. Yeah, everybody's got bus clothes. It would have to be washed or just thrown away. Right. I learned that from you guys. <laughs> she would be giving me. <laughs> Give me some back and forth. I don't even know if it works. Yeah. I'm going to guess no. <laughs> kind of hard. Okay. Good? Yeah. So it's just king pin on the side too? This is the nastiest looking coolant you're ever going to see. It only had water in it when he bought it. He drained it, flushed it, put coolant in it, but it's terrible. We're replacing the brake diaphragms and the tag axle. They're very dry rotted and needed to be done. Uh, all the other brake chambers have been replaced or we're replacing on the bus. This one we're just doing diaphragms. As we're replacing the wheel studs here, this Tiger Tool stud uh, press is really cool. It's very convenient. You don't have to lift up the heavy hub and put it on a, a press. Somewhere I have an air over hydraulic pump like that. I'll have to dig it out. <laughs> oh, you don't have to put it all the way down to here to get it out. How many flushes is this? Four? Uh, three or four, yeah. yeah. So it's getting, you can start to see through it. <laughs> getting closer. So this is either five or six, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's two more than it was the last time. It's definitely a lot clearer. Up here in this front compartment, there's a little grease fitting right there, and that's what adds grease to the chamber for the distribution of a, the automatic greaser. So we put uh, two and a half tubes of grease in there until it was kind of filled it all the way up. It was coming out the sides. And we test it and see if we can get to work. So all of these lines come in to this automatic greaser, but you can see nothing's been getting greased. Look how dry everything is. And if you're relying on this system, I mean, it comes down here and it does the tie rods and everything 
but they didn't do this. It never had one run to that. And look how dry this is. No grease. I ain't ever seen grease because they were trusting the system to grease everything. Um, we got into the power panel here. Um, this is supposed to be able to bypass it with this button here uh, with the ignition switch on and you ground out the uh, oil, oil uh, the low oil sender in the back. Um, we couldn't get it to work with that. It runs by air pressure as well. And then I followed this cable back into this wiring harness and it loops around a whole bunch of times back there and then it comes out of there, comes around to here and they've cut the fuse out of it. So something happened to it that they wanted to actually remove the fuse from it so there was no power. But I bypassed it and added power to it and still didn't work uh, with the power probe. So we're just disconnecting it and running all grease fittings on everything. This goes to stuff in the back too, slack adjusters, S cams, all that stuff is, is off of there. So we're gonna go get it uh, straightened out just so we can manually grease it and eliminate that automated thing that really caused more problems than it did good. So that's the automatic greaser up there. It's got 24 lines that run out of it and go to various grease fittings around the bus. But somebody disabled it. We filled it with grease, tried to get it to work again, and something must have been wrong with it. Why? And then they cut the fuse out of it. But we just replaced everything. We put grease fittings now on everything. So it can be manually greased. This pressure regulator regulates how much air pressure goes to the tag axle and it had failed. It was putting 75 PSI, which is way too much uh, air in there. So we put a new regulator on. We replaced all the wheel studs on here with a longer stud as well. Um, we're replacing these airbags. They're on back order right now. We went ahead and we replaced the other brake chamber on the other side had failed. He had already replaced it. So we went ahead and replaced this one too, just because it's aged out with the, uh, the diaphragms inside. So we replaced that brake chamber. While we had that brake chamber off, we went ahead and took the bottom bolt off of that airbag because it's very hard to get to. Um, the trick to those is if you put a wrench, on, you can get a wrench up in there on it just barely and then pull the airbag out, take the top off, drop it down, and you can. it's got one screw and one post in the bottom middle of it and you can actually spin the airbag around to remove it. But we went ahead, this one since we had the brake chamber off, we did that. Uh, we're waiting on shocks and airbags for the drive axle here. We just got the airbags in for this and we've we gotta get it inflated we haven't inflated it. it's sitting there but uh it's mounted on and then we're waiting on the shock for this as well so we'll have that done same thing on this side we replace the airbag um and then we're waiting on the shock and then this can go back together and then this has the new longer studs on it as well and that was the one that he had already replaced the brake chamber and then we're replacing those two airbags and we did the valve for the tag axle pressure. We already swapped out too. Um, there's something else that we did back here. Oh, we put new diaphragms in the brake chambers back here for the tag axles. So those were dry rotted pretty well. So it's got all new brake chambers everywhere on the bus or diaphragms. So the only ones that didn't get the chambers replaced are the tags. Uh, the drive axles are new. Uh, the owner changed those right before he came here. You can see the rust all over the engine here. They had a, a hose failure before they came here. And that's when he realized that it only had water in the cooling system and it was all rusty water. So everything has that kind of rusted coating on it. But we've, we've totally flushed this engine um, and it's really clean inside now. So we're getting ready to put the coolant in it and we're gonna be putting the, the purple stuff in, which is the correct kind of coolant for it. Um, because it's a 92 series, it has wet liners. Basically you need to find something that has like a semi truck on the cover, on the on the front of it, um, that's gonna be made for something with wet liners. Usually that's the case. And even here in the back, like we put new fittings in, uh, the S-cam there and on the slack adjuster. Um, that's all stuff that those original, that self greasing system went to, but hadn't been greased forever. I mean, you've never seen one that dry, but luckily it's got very low miles on it. So it hasn't really torn things up, but if it would have kept going down the road without somebody greasing it, it would have been in big, big trouble with this bus. 
Here you can see our list board that we keep track of what we got going on here. We've already done the tag air valve because the tag air pressure was too high. Um, the tag airbags have been replaced. We're waiting on the tag shocks. Uh, the tag brake diaphragms have been replaced. The kingpins have been redone. Uh, the drive axle airbags we're waiting on. Drive axle shocks we're waiting on. Uh, the drive axle brake chamber, we replaced the one that hadn't been replaced yet. We put all new wheel studs in it and we replaced the air governor that was bad on it. Um, it wasn't building air, uh, it was changing what it would build to and not. And then we obviously greased the chassis on it, which haven't done a long time. We still need to look at the speedometer that he was getting. Uh, it was working and then it wasn't working and it was working and it wasn't working. I'm, I'm suspecting it's a short somewhere. Uh, and then the pyrometers are not working on the engine for the exhaust gas temperatures. The speedometer on this bus is, is mounted back here. There's a, let's see if I can get a light on here. It's a good distance from it. I don't see anything wrong with it there. It reads off these little notched teeth on the brake drum there. Um, we're gonna follow that wire back and see if it looks like it's chafed somewhere. If there's a short, uh, that would be my guess. It would give it a sporadic uh, working, not working kind of thing. Well, that's where we're at with it right now. It's waiting on parts. I don't wanna take the airbags off in case, because if I absolutely have to, I can throw the wheels back on it and drive it out of the shop. And then, because it just depends on when the parts are gonna come in. But um, yeah, it's waiting on parts stinks. From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. But at the top of that mountain, there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. They can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done 